Hello. A couple of videos ago, we introduced sequences. And remember, a sequence is just an infinitely long list of numbers. So for example, here we have all the multiples of two. We've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. And we could keep on listing all the multiples of two forever. Now, if we take the first n terms of a sequence and add them up, we can get what's called a partial sum Sn. So let's just do a few partial sums using this example here. S1, we find by adding up the first one term of the series, of the sequence. So S1 is equal to, we'll just add two. And so we'll get two. S2 is found by adding the first two terms of the sequence. So we've got two plus four, or in other words, six. S3 we get by adding the first three terms of the sequence. So we've got two plus four plus six or 12. And we can keep going. We can get S4 by adding up two, four, six, eight, and we'll get 20. And so we could just keep going like this. So Sn is equal to the sum of the first n terms. So we've got um, first n terms of the sequence. OK, so lots of times um, we just want to generalize things. So let's say that we're starting with the sequence a1, a2, a3, a4, and so on. Then the partial sum Sn is equal to the sum of the first n items in this sequence here. So Sn is equal to the sum a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus up to a n. Or sometimes you'll see this written Sn is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of a i. And that's just saying the exact same thing as up here. We've got a1 plus a2 plus up to a n. OK, so these are our partial sums. Now, let's think about instead of just adding up to n, let's add forever and ever and ever. So then this creates what's called an infinite series. And now we're just adding more and more and more terms. We're never going to stop adding terms. So we'll write this infinite series as the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a n. So this is our partial sum s n. And then this is our infinite series so if we think about this, this is like if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn, then we get this infinite series here. OK, so the partial sums can help us learn about the infinite series. In particular, if the sequence of partial sums Sn converges to S, in other words, if the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn is equal to S, then we would say that the series converges and its sum is S. Another way that we can write this is we can write the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a n is equal to S. OK, so before we talked about the convergence of sequences, and now you can see that we're building on that knowledge of convergence of sequences to figure out whether a partial sum um, creates a series, an infinite series that converges. OK, so let's think about what happens if our partial sums do not converge. If we look at our partial sums and they don't converge, or in other words, if the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn does not exist, then we would say that the series diverges. So the series either converges and has a sum S, or if the limit of the partial sums doesn't exist, then we say that the infinite series diverges. OK, let's look at an example. 
So here our example, we have a n is equal to 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1 for n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. We're wondering if the infinite series of these terms converges. If it does, what is its limit? OK, so to answer a question like this, to figure out whether an infinite series converges, it helps to write out some of the terms here. So we're going to write these out. We have the general rule, but let's write out what a1 is, a2, a3, and so on. So if we take n equals 1 and plug that in, then we know that a1 is equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2. a2 is equal to, now we're going to plug n equals 2 in here and here. So we will get 1 half minus 1 third. Okay, let's also do this for n equals 3. When we plug n equals 3 in, we get a3 is equal to 1 third minus 1 quarter, and we could keep going. So we have some of the terms here. Now let's look at the partial sums. So S1 is equal to A1, which we figured out is 1 minus a half. Or in other words, this is a half. S2 is equal to A1 plus A2. We said A1 is 1 minus a half, and A2 is a half minus a third. Now we can see that the half here and the half here cancel. So that just leaves 1 minus 1 third, or in other words, that leaves 2 thirds. Now let's look at S3. S3 is equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3. We figured out A1 is equal to 1 minus a half. A2 is equal to 1 half minus a third. A3 is equal to 1 third minus a quarter. And again, we can see we get some cancellation here. The halves cancel and the thirds cancel. And that leaves us with 1 minus a quarter. Okay. We hopefully are starting to see this pattern here. We could probably figure it out that Sn is equal to 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So our nth partial sum is equal to 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So we said that we need to figure out if the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn exists. So let's check it out. Let's look at the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn. That's the same thing as a limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. When n goes to infinity, then this denominator grows without bound, meaning that this fraction will decrease down to 0. So we'll have 1 minus 0, or in other words, 1. So since the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn is equal to 1, in other words, since the limit exists, we can say that the infinite series converges to 1. Or in other words, the sum is 1. OK, so here is an example where our infinite series converges And since it converges, we can say what its sum is, and its sum is 1. If we had um, an infinite series that diverges, then we would not be able to say what its sum is. Maybe the sum will just explode off to infinity um, or something like that. OK, so that is one example of convergence of a series.
Now let's give you some info about convergence of series. So if you know that one series adds up to some number, so let's say that our first series is equal to some number, let's say capital A. And so this could be like 10 or 37 or whatever. And then let's say that we have another series and it converges to capital B. Then if we're gonna add these two series together, the sum will be capital A plus capital B. Or in other words, our series from n equals one to infinity of a n plus b n is equal to capital A plus capital B. Okay, how about if we take this first series here and multiply it by some constant. So like, let's have k be a constant, maybe your favorite number, maybe 32. Then that means that if we take every term and multiply it by k, then this series here is going to converge to k times the series from n equals 1 to infinity of a n. And we already know that this series here converges to a. So this is equal to k times capital A. Okay, so for example, we figured out that the series sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n minus one over n plus one, we figured out that that's equal to one. Now, if I look at the sum from n equals one to infinity of four times, one over n minus one over n plus one. We know that this is gonna be equal to four times sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n minus one over n plus one. And since all of this is equal to one, then I know this is equal to four times one or four. So since this series here converges to one, then I can multiply this series here by any constant and that will also converge. And then up here we're saying if this series converges and this series converges, then the sum of those two series will also converge. And then it'll converge to whatever this one converges to plus whatever this one converges to. Okay, so that is a little bit about convergence. A couple more things to know is we can change the order of the terms that we add them up. So you know how one, one plus three plus 11, that's the same thing as 11 plus one plus three. And that's the same thing as, um, three, three plus one plus 11. We know that these things all add up to the same thing. Changing the order doesn't matter. Same thing happens with an infinite series. We can change the order that we add things up um, and it will not change whether it converges. Okay, more things to know about convergence. Say that you have the limit as n goes to infinity of a n. This, if this does not equal zero, or if the limit 
as n goes to infinity of n does not exist. Then our series diverges. OK, so let's think about this. Let's think about why this makes sense. So we have these terms. If the limit of the terms does not equal 0, then our infinite series will diverge. So the only way for this series to converge is if the terms become increasingly close to 0. So like, let's think about this. Let's think about if we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here we can see that our terms are getting larger. So if we have our, our partial sums are going to be S1 is 1, S2 equals 1 plus 2 or 3, S3 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 or 6, S4 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, so 10. We can see that here these are starting to look like they're growing without bound. So our partial sums are growing without bound. So our partial sums will not be able to converge. And this is happening because these terms are not getting increasingly close to zero. So here's a1, here's a2, a3, the limit of these terms here as n goes to infinity is not equal to zero. All right, more good information to know. If you have a series that diverges, then multiplying it by a constant will, means that that series will also diverge as long as k is not equal to zero. Of course, if k is equal to 0, then we'll have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. That's going to equal 0. And so then our partial sums would definitely um, converge to 0. So if we have our constant k equal to 0, it's not very interesting. That'll make our series converge. But for any k that's not 0, then if we multiply each term by k, that'll make the series the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of k times a n. That'll make that series diverge. All right, so that's a little bit of information about convergence. Um, lots of times we want to know, is the series going to converge or not? So one way that we can know if the series will converge is by using something called the integral test. And we use the integral test. This is really useful because you're already pretty good at integration. So we're going to leverage our integration skills to figure out whether a series converges. Okay, so suppose you have an is equal to some function of n. We need f of x to be decreasing and positive. All right. If the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x diverges, then that means that our series also diverges. On the other hand, if our series converges, 
or rather if our integral converges, then that tells us that our infinite series converges. Okay, so we can use our integration skills to help us understand whether an infinite series converges. So let's look at an example. Let's look at the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n. And we're wondering, does this sum converge? We're going to use our integral test up here to figure it out. So here our a n is equal to one over n. So that means we're going to use f of x is equal to one over x. So we're gonna check if the integral from one to infinity of one over x dx converges. All right, so we're gonna write this improper integral with a limit. We'll use the limit as b goes to infinity integral from one to b integrand is one over x and we're integrating with respect to x. This is equal to the limit as b goes to infinity of natural log of x. Lower endpoint is one, upper bound of integration is b. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the natural log of b minus the natural log of one. And we know that the natural log of one is zero. So if we think about our function natural log, it increases without bound. So as we move further and further right, then natural log is going to increase and increase. So this increases without bound. So this is going to shoot off to infinity. This integral does not converge. So our integral from one to infinity of one over x dx diverges. And this tells us that our sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n also diverges by the integral test. Okay, let's look at one that converges using our integral test. So let's check if our sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n squared converges. So we're using our integral test. A n we can see is one over n squared. So then that means that f of x is equal to one over x squared. So we wanna check if our integral from one to infinity of one over x squared dx converges. All right, so first thing we do is we rewrite our improper integral using a limit. So we have the limit as b goes to infinity, we integrate from one up to b, one over x squared dx. All right, so then we've got the limit as b goes to infinity, and then we've got negative one third, and we've got x cubed in the denominator. We're integrating from one up to b, where b is going to infinity. So this is equal to the limit as b goes to infinity of negative one over three b All right, going back a second, um, antiderivative of one over x squared is negative one over x. So now let's fix this. So we've got 
negative one over B plus one. B is going to infinity. So if our denominator here is going to infinity, then this whole fraction is going to zero. So this goes to one. In other words, this tells us that our integral from one to infinity of one over x squared dx converges. And since this converges, that tells us our sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n squared also converges. All right, that's it for this video. Remember all of our good convergence properties and remember especially our integral test. It's really helpful in a lot of cases for figuring out whether an infinite series converges. Remember that we need to have um, f of x be decreasing and positive in order to use it. But if those two conditions are met, then it's very useful. All right, good luck.